Hey, Phil here with videoschoolonline.com. Today, I want to share five tips for beginner editors, specifically for people using Adobe Premiere Pro, but you might be able to transition these same tips to whatever editor you're using. And I'm putting out this video because I'm just launching a brand new Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud course completely taught with Creative Cloud, and it's going to walk you through the entire Premiere Pro editing process so you can edit like a pro. There will be a link in the description below, but let's get to the tips. Tip number one is to turn on your auto save. I don't know how many times that I myself, a professional video editor, have forgotten to turn on auto save when I started working on a new project on a new computer. Just go up to Premiere Pro CC, preferences, and auto save. This will bring up your preferences. I automatically save projects every five minutes and I keep a maximum project version of 20. You might want to do more, you might want to do more frequent, but this seems to work for me. My second key tip is to learn the shortcuts. It will make you such a more faster and more efficient editor. When you hover over a tool, you will see the keyboard shortcut. Try to remember these. When you go up to the menu, you might see the keyboard shortcut as well. I'm using a Mac. One that I think you should learn right now is how to add default transitions to your video and audio tracks. Here I'm working on a project. It's a documentary about my friend Anthony Carbajal. This is the project we're going to be working on in this class. And if I want to add a transition to the beginning and the end of this lower third title, this title card right there, I just select my clip and press Command D on my keyboard. It adds a cross dissolve to this title, in and out. And the cross dissolve is the default transition. If you don't want it to happen on both the in and out points of your clip, you can just select one, select the N, press Command D. You can also do this for audio. Say I want to add a constant power transition, the default audio fade, to the beginning of this Goodbye Summer track. I just click on the beginning, press Command Shift D. If you're using a PC, instead of Command, press Control Shift D, and that adds that to the beginning. Or if I want to add one to the beginning and end, I can take any of my audio clips, so let's just say this video clip right here, and press Command Shift D, and it adds the audio fade to the beginning and end. Keyboard shortcuts will save you much, much time, so try to remember them as you learn Premiere Pro. The next tip is to use adjustment layers to do color correction, specifically when you are color correcting an interview or some kind of video where you have lots of video clips of someone talking. So here we have in this track three, all of the shots of Anthony talking in this interview setup. I could go through and color correct one of these and then add that color correction to the rest of these clips. But what happens then is if I make one adjustment to one of these clips, then I would have to make the same adjustment to all of the clips and that would take a lot of time. I've actually created an adjustment layer, which you can do by clicking this new item button, adjustment layer, selecting okay. It appears here in your project panel and then you can add this to your sequence. I recommend doing it right above the video track layer of the clips that you want to correct. And notice that for me, track three is only this interview footage. Track one is the B camera shot of this interview. And track five is all of my B roll. So all my extra footage. So I have a different adjustment layer for camera one and a different adjustment layer for camera two. Now with this adjustment layer, I can add the Lumetri color effect or any of the other color correction effects or really any effect and it will apply to all of the layers below. So that's why I have this gap right here where I'm showing the B camera because I don't want this A camera adjustment to apply to the B camera shot. So I've split it right there to leave a gap so only the B camera color adjustment affects this camera itself. So say for some reason I decide I want to make this video black and white, I can go to my Lumetri Color. I could either go up to Windows, Lumetri Color, and open up my basic correction tools, make sure that I have the adjustment layer selected, 
and then drop the saturation all the way. And now all of the clips underneath this adjustment layer right here have been edited. I don't have to go to each individual clip and adjust the saturation separately. And this will save you a lot of time. Tip number four is to add subtle motion to your titles. If I play through this, it's hard to notice, but there's some very subtle motion happening on this title card. The more subtle, the better, I believe. And if I zoom in here just a little bit more so you could see it even clearer, you can probably see more of that motion. I added that motion by going to the, mo the title card itself, going to the motion tab, I'm going to delete these two keyframes to show you what I did. Go to the position and set a new keyframe. So find the final resting spot or the beginning spot. So I'm going to start this clip over here using this position, move it just to the left a little bit, set a keyframe, move that keyframe to the very beginning. Then I'm going to move the title all the way to the right a little bit, move that keyframe all the way to the right to the end of this clip. Now, if I play through it, there's this subtle motion to it. And I think that will make your graphics stand out just a little bit from the rest. And then my last tip is just when you are previewing your video, whether it's for yourself or when you are showing it to a friend or a coworker, you can select the panel that you want to blow up on your computer screen and press the tilde key. The tilde key is the one right below the escape button on the left hand side. And you can see just by tapping that I can do a full screen or mostly full screen preview of the video. So just a quick way rather than going here and trying to make it bigger, you can just select the panel and press the tilde key and make sure you're on the right panel. You can see if I go to audio track mixer and do it or the timeline and do it, I can open up different panels. So those are five tips for beginner video editors. I give hundreds more tips in the Adobe Premiere Pro course. You're going to learn everything that I'm teaching right now in further depth, plus lots, lots more. So if this was a little bit too advanced for you, then we're going to start from the beginning in that course. And if this was just right, then we're going to have lots more lessons like this one, but we will start from the start for anyone that is brand new to Adobe Premiere Pro and wants to get started and edit with the mindset of a pro. Thanks for watching. The links to the course will be in the description and I can't wait to see some of you there. Otherwise, I'll just see you in another tutorial.